Hey guys, this is Mars Peach here. Uh, I was trying to decide on what I would film my next review about because I read so many books this month and I decided I was gonna do something different because for one I couldn't decide and then I read so much that it was kinda hard to maybe because I waited and I didn't write down my thoughts right away I, it's hard for me to go back and pick out so much of, you know, my opinions on one particular book to try to even fill up a whole review for it. So I decided I was going to do something different and I'm just going to go through and give my very quick reviews of everything that I read in the month of June. This is obviously going to have to be broken up because there's probably no way I can get it done in one video and whatever. I don't know where I'm going to split it up, but I'll just see how long this takes me. Anywho, just going in chronological order of when I read them. First book I read this month was kind of plain, but um, Red Harvest by Dashiell Hammett. That is it. It's in this Complete Novels. I guess it's kind of a collector's edition. Uh, there we go. Whoa. Red Harvest. This was uh, Hammett's first novel. And if you're not familiar with him, he was a very popular uh, American mystery writer. He did The, the Thin Man, that, you know, those movies were based on, and uh, The Maltese Falcon. This first one probably isn't so popular, but... Um, it's a murder story, and the detective in it doesn't even have a name. He's like from this agency. He's called the Continental OP. I don't, he's not even named. Uh, to tell you the truth, I really only read this mystery because I'm a big fan of British cozy mysteries. Like I love Agatha Christie, Dorothy L. Sayers, and even um, Rex Stout's Near Wolf series. Even though those are American. Those are more cozy than um, the American style, more hard-boiled. Read this to be different. I wasn't really that fond of it with all, you know, like the crazy stuff that is characteristic of the hard-boiled mysteries, like a lot of violence and more action, um, loose women and all that kind of crap. Uh, the first, the mystery was actually solved pretty quickly, and then the rest of the book was bent on other things. I don't know, maybe it was only his first novel, or I'm just not cut out for that kind of style. I don't know, I would probably give the book maybe like a 6 out of 10 rating. And my next book that I read is a historical romance, uh, Catherine by Anya Seaton. I think I included this on my least favorite covers list, but um, I read this because I read last year and enjoyed another of Seton's novels, which is Green Darkness. Um, I think all of her books are historical setting of romance. This has to do with uh, Catherine Swinford and John of Gaunt. They were ancestors to a lot of the British royal family. Um, I do, I appreciate the book for, for Seton's obvious, like her attention to historical detail. That was really interesting. You could tell she really did her homework. But um, I really wasn't fond of the characters at all. And their romance was just too sappy. I didn't buy it. <laughs> uh, even uh, the main character, Catherine, uh, she even realizes at one point. like She's like, oh, you know, I've been neglecting my daughter because I'm just so wrapped up in all my love and romance. I mean, that's pretty bad. So this book is another 6 out of 10 for me. Next one is hmm, Cross the Universe by Beth Revis. And this is one I actually put on my favorite covers list, believe it or not. I think everybody loves this book cover in some way. Uh, this is a sci-fi dystopian that takes place in the future on a spaceship. So, I mean, you don't know if Earth at that time, if we're in, like, a dystopian society, too, or not. 
Uh, I really enjoyed it. I was afraid I was going to be let down because I just thought the cover and the premise sounded cool. Um, but I wasn't. I really liked um, the main character, Amy. She was just, just like a very realistic, uh, like a girl next door character. There was really nothing crazy special about her, but she was written very well, very realistically. And uh, not, not a lot of Mary Sue or anything like that. And there was some romance in it, but not not too much. And there was a, a murder mystery involved, which I'm a huge mystery lover. As you can see, most of my books this month are going to be mysteries. So I really liked that aspect of it, too. And I would probably I give it, like, and I'll round it up to 9 out of 10, or maybe 8.5 around there for Across the Universe. Next one is, okay, have two other mysteries here, it is Some Buried Caesar and The Golden Spiders by Rex Stout, and these are Nero Wolf mysteries, if you're not familiar with Nero Wolf, the character, uh, he is a reclusive, obese, um, detective in New York who has uh, his assistant Archie Goodwin go out and actually do the legwork like interviewing people and finding clues and stuff for the crimes and he very rarely leaves uh, his brownstone and he just you know he listens to the information and then he comes up with um, the answer uh, this is two books in one the first one some buried Caesar is apparently a bull or a prize bull has killed somebody but uh, the signs Nero Wolf finds actually points to murder. He actually left home for this one. Uh, I, this book started out interesting and there is a character introduced who later be ends up becoming like a recurring character in the series who I really enjoyed reading about. Um, Unfortunately, probably like close to halfway through, I, f I feel like it fizzled out for me. I really, I, I lost interest. Um, it picked up again at the end, but there was that part in the middle where I just I didn't really care anymore about the bull or anything, and I was disappointed because I think that's actually one of his, like, one of the favorite ones of the fans. Um, the second one in here again, The Golden Spiders is they're not in order chronologically that's like a much later one um, there are actually a couple people killed and one of them is a 12 year old boy which was really sad um, again this one started out good and then I don't know I guess I got confused somewhere along the line even at the end when everything was wrapped up and and I watched the adaptation of it too. I didn't really understand like the motive for some of the murders. I feel like it could have easily been solved another way, and it was like they shouldn't have been murdered. I mean, obviously no one should be murdered, but I had a hard time just kind of wrapping my head around that. I'm like, this shouldn't have happened. <laughs> they know it's silly, but so for some buried Caesar, I would probably give a six, and the Golden Spiders a six. So overall, this book is a 6 out of 10 stars obviously <sighs> next okay I have another collection of this Agatha Christie one hot this time my favorite mystery author Poirot in the Orient this contains three of her novels murder in Mesopotamia death on the Nile and appointment with death uh, murder in Mesopotamia has to do with um, an archaeologist's wife uh, in Iraq is receiving threatening letters, and then she ends up murdered, and um, Poirot has to solve it. I really enjoyed that one, but it was really, really a good read, but there, I found the solution very far-fetched. Uh, I actually, once you start to read enough Agatha Christie novels, you can... If you figure out the pattern, anyone should be able to, you can most of the time solve the mystery yourself. Um, and it, I try to do that every time I read one. In this one, uh, I actually, I had this like crackpot theory at the beginning. I'm like, you know what? 
this is probably in my head the solution. It was probably so and so, and this is why. But I'm like, that's just too crazy, too insane, so unbelievable. No way she'd go there. What do you know? I was right. Uh, you, she kind of tried to explain it away, but I still, you really have to suspend disbelief to get that one. And it, it didn't ruin the book for me. I'd probably still give it like an eight, but. If you read the book, you know what I'm talking about. I can't say it without spoiling it. The uh, next one, Death on the Nile, is uh, this married couple on their honeymoon is being stalked by the husband's ex fiance. Um, and then they, uh, they're they in Egypt and they end up on a boat. And what do you know? The stalker ex is there too. And then the wife is murdered. Um, and Poirot, of course, is there to save the day, as always. I really loved this book. Um, I love kind of like all of the psychologies described of all of the various characters, and everything, and just the plot itself was really, really interesting. Unfortunately, well, not even unfortunately, the only nitpick I have with it is there on their... Uh, ship that they're on there's there's quite a few characters and therefore suspects um and it's kind of hard at first it takes a while to like keep track of everyone and remember like oh wait who is oh that's that person and there were a couple of them that i would get mixed up i mean i got there at the end but uh that's the only actual bad thing i can say about it and yeah i did guess this one correctly too and I thought it was a very satisfying solution not only because I I was right and I figured it out but I still liked it playing out that way um, and the last one appointment with death all of these obviously are Poirot on vacation not much of a vacation if a murder <laughs> keeps happening but uh, this one is uh, a sadistic old woman and her like children and stepchildren are on vacation and the lady is like very controlling of them and uh, there's so many people who want her dead and then she of course winds up murdered and um i did not guess this one at all it was completely out of left field the i really liked that book a lot too uh it, though another like a nitpick thing I would probably say the ending was a little bit cheesy like really really cheesy um I still liked it but uh <laughs> there might be kind of naysayers out there like well that's stupid or something and um both of those well death on the Nile I would give a 10 out of 10 stars I really love that one and appointment with death probably a nine so I think on the whole, I would give this book Poirot in the Orient a 9 out of 10. I think it's a must read for any Agatha Christie or Poirot fan.